irretrievable breakdown can be grounds for divorce. That is the big story at this hour. Hello and welcome to Newsroom Newsbreak. I'm Sarah Jacob. You're with us on uh, NDTV. Let's uh, bring you up to date with the top story right now. And it has emerged out of the Supreme Court this afternoon, a constitution bench of the Supreme Court today ruled that the court can dissolve a marriage in the case of an irretrievable breakdown by dispensing or doing away with the need of that waiting period, uh, a six month waiting period which was uh, required under marital law. So the big story, the Supreme Court today held that it can dissolve marriages now on the grounds of irretrievable breakdown of marriage. For that, it would invoke powers under Article 142. It is also said that the mandatory waiting period of six months for divorce through mutual consent can be done away with. But this is subject to conditions. So what are these conditions? We'll try and find out for you. Uh, it said, uh, the court said that they've laid down factors which can determine when there will be an irretrievable breakdown of marriage. This is uh, uh, the hearing in front of a constitution bench. It comprises of the judges you can see on your screen, Justices Sanjay Kishan Kaul, Sanjeev Khanna, A.S. Oka, Vikram Nath, and J.K. Maheshwari. And of course, the um, question now would be, what are the broad parameters for the exercise of power under Article 142 of the Constitution to dissolve a marriage between consenting parties without referring the parties to family court where you'll have to wait out that mandatory period which is prescribed under section 13b of the hindu marriage act sunil prabhu has the story from the supreme court today <clears throat> trying to uh, you know see whether there is a possible of rehabilitation will continue but having said that uh, what they are saying is where when all options have been done uh, uh, then the Supreme Court can uh, do away with that uh, mandatory six-month period that is required. Uh, so it's in that context that they have uh, very, uh, very uh, carefully worded and said that the irretrievable grounds for, uh, you know, revocation of a marriage uh, can be the Supreme Court because it's the court of equity can decide where matters have been settled, where there is no chance of, you know, uh, uh, partners uh, being, uh, 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 you know, trying to coexist once again, uh, when those grounds are not there at all, when they've settled, for example, the alumni, the children's issues and everything else, uh, then uh, definitely the uh, six-month mandatory period uh, can be done away with. And under Article 142 of the, uh, Supreme, uh, of the Constitution, the Supreme Court, uh, can do away with it. So that's the ground and that's the ruling that they've given. Uh, this will definitely uh, come as a huge relief uh, for those who have been waiting uh, where they can definitely then appeal and hopefully get uh, some kind of relief at the earliest. All right, for more on this, uh, Kapil Madan, advocate in the Supreme Court, and Ashantosh uh, Srivastava, also advocate in the Supreme Court, both joining us now. Uh, to try and uh, decode what this means for all of us, the Ahmadmi on the ground. So, first of all, Kapil Madan, to you, why is this? Is this, and uh, uh, if so, why is it a landmark judgment? Uh, uh, yes. So, you know, if you look at the scheme of the Act, the period of six months was provided under the Act as a cooling off period to give parties a chance to rethink about you know, breaking their marriage, sure. dissolving their marriage. And perhaps that's the reason why you had the six months uh, uh, cooling off period, which is also uh, known as a mandatory, known as a mandatory uh, waiting period. So, you know, the court has clarified that under, you know, extreme circumstances, you can waive off uh, this uh, uh, waiting period. And another important factors, uh, factor in the judgment is that the Supreme Court has also recognized irretrievable breakdown of marriage as one of the ground to seek divorce. If you look at the Hindu Marriage Act, irretrievable breakdown of marriage is not one of the factors which can weigh with the court on the basis of which a decree of divorce can be granted in a contested case. If you look at the other jurisdiction in America, you have irretrievable breakdown of marriage as one of the ground to seek divorce. So, uh, uh, you know, perhaps this is, a, a, you know, this uh, 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 finding or the decision by the court where though the act does not provide a irretrievable breakdown of marriage as a ground for divorce since the court has now recognized I think to me this is the uh, landmark feature of the judgment. All right so then uh, Ashantosh Srivastav but uh, this court seems to have also given some conditions right so how do you want how does one decide when a marriage will be uh, irretrievably broken down what are those conditions how will it play out is it case by case 
see uh, you know as of now when the couple used to file a divorce by mutual consent under section 13b b of the uh, hindu marriage act uh, obviously there was a waiting period of 6 months yeah. so the uh, court used to give 6 six months that you go you decide you come back again after 6 months yes. you see that uh, if you have any uh, you know uh, immediate issues by which you have come uh, before this court for divorce so you get a uh, sufficient opportunity to discuss the issue between both of you and then you can come after 6 months so that used to delay the entire process now by that time maybe the couple they are uh, filing uh, different kind of cases against each other different kind of allegations against each other and then uh, it used to get delayed because the matter in hand also the supreme court realized that uh, the couple had stayed only for 4 years and they had a long battle of 25 years in the court by uh, different litigations against each other so mm-hmm. the court found that you know filing cases against each other is also a kind of cruelty because mm. there was no provision provision in the uh, uh, hindu marriage act for irretrievable uh, marriage by which you can go and get the divorce the cruelty was only the ground so the court has considered that these kind of litigations when both the couples have decided not to stay together and they are just unnecessarily uh, litigating against each other can also be considered as a ground for cruelty and Got under it. which uh you know the the uh, the marriage can be uh, uh, dissolved and uh, the both the parties can be freed by uh, uh, exercising such power and uh, while doing so the the supreme court has uh, uh, invoked uh, article 142 of the constitution which gives such powers to the supreme court to make such uh, such decisions based on the you know execution of any orders or Got decrees it. So accordingly okay. decided and uh, obviously it is a landmark judgment because uh, it will save lot of time of the hmm. uh, people who are not at all interested to stay together got it and so it the point also, here i just uh, want to clarify for our viewers yes. this is only in those cases where there is divorce by mutual consent where both uh, sides yeah, want yeah. it right yes yeah. that's the so first we, important yeah. point okay but uh, kapil yeah, madan you know if you can yeah hmm. Yes, uh, six months period is as per the mutual consent only. That six yeah. p- uh, months a waiver of these six months. Whenever somebody goes and files a petition under uh, 13B of the Hindu Marriage Act, then there was a waiting period of six months. Yeah. So you're so clarifying that that, that waiting mutual. period was always in uh, in place anyway, only yes. for uh, mutual consent divorce, mutual. not consent, uh, not uh, contested divorce, etc., etc. But no, Mr. Madan, no. uh, again, I just want to look at those conditions or the criteria because if I can play devil's advocate, there was a logic to um, having the six-month waiting period. in place right like it was i think it was called a cooling off period that you may change your mind the cost criticism of it was that you know women were told no no you have to wait for 6 months you're not treating them as adults who can take decisions but there was a logic for which that was put into place so what happens to that or the merit of that argument which has held on the ground for so many years uh see we need to you know look at uh, this on case to case basis there could be you know cases where you know the parties who are litigating they may have issues they may have children so i mean the court while deciding the waiver application they look at the you know facts and circumstances of that particular case and then they pass an order accordingly i just put in the another you know uh, example from the act the act also provides that within first year of marriage there cannot be a divorce petition for divorce by mutual consent there is a bar however there is an exception Uh, to this rule wherein you can you know go to the court file an application and see waiver of this condition however the court are very conservating uh, while allowing such an application so i think it's a you know to my understanding it's a step in the you know right direction because once the parties all the parties who are litigating these kind of cases they are adults they know their what are their life circumstances yeah. and this this you know unnecessarily increase the workload on the court because it's a you know technically it's the same thing that happens while one moves a second petition there is nothing new what happens once once a couple goes before the court and present their first motion petition seeking divorce there is nothing that is there is nothing that a judge or the court does when a second motion petition is presented so it's merely a procedural requirement wherein the parties had to wait for 6 months 
and they have to appear before the same court with the same set of petition with the same set of facts now the point is when the parties are clear their mindset is clear hmm. and you know when they have taken the decision and mind you when the petition is presented in the court the judge inquires about the facts that are stated in the petition whether those facts are correct whether the information that is given is correct whether the date Got of marriage it. is incorrect correct whether the date of separation is correct or not so all these things you know the court examines when you present the first petition which hmm. is called as a first motion you do the same thing after 6 months so you unnecessarily increase the workload on the court also you put a pressure an additional requirement before the litigants to appear before the court file the petition engage lawyers which is nothing but a you know exercise in futility all right so this decision is highly praised or it's a landmark uh, 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 verdict because it's uh, a couple no longer has to go through this agony or a delay that often leads to mental breakdowns in an individual you can say it's a closed chapter and you can move on but again ashantosh shivasa can you just explain to us if either of you can who, whoever would like to just put your hand up uh, what are those circumstances those conditions that the court has mentioned i think today in the in the in the judgment but we don't have uh, more clarity on what exactly like how do you decide whether yes you can get that uh, six month period waived off uh see uh, obviously that the when the order comes and it is uploaded it will be there in the hands of uh, most of the lawyers who can go through the minute details of the that order but uh, as uh, already having said uh, uh, that you know uh, that uh, uh, this is this was a very old law uh, you know the Ma hindu marriage act was of 1956 obviously there were certain amendments in between so the purpose of this uh, 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 i mean condition of 6 months was to basically safeguard the uh, marriage uh, you know to to uh, to uh, promote that there should not be uh, you know dissolution of marriage to to respect the institution of marriage so that it is not broken so easily but yeah. now as the times have changed you know the the litigations are going for years and years then the basic purpose of getting divorced is uh, you know defeated yeah. if somebody have to go for years together to get a divorce so that person cannot either it's a male or female cannot decide the future you know uh, if they have anything in their mind so by the time it is decided it it becomes too late for them to take further decision in their life for second marriage or maybe a settlement in their lives so i think uh, this will safeguard the interest of the people rather earlier the uh, uh, the uh, divorce was not so common but now it has become a common phenomena uh, hmm. between the couples and uh, they are also not dependent on each other both are independent working in most of the cases we have seen so i think it will save the time energy and everything for both of them and it will be easier for them that they sit together and if they are not happy they decide mutually that it's better that let's part the ways instead of going and uh, 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 through lot of litigations and years and years All of right. uh, arguments in different courts All so right. i think this will favor different uh, you know it will give a different message Got it. So it is, a, it is an people. order that is reflective of the times that we live in. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, go ahead, uh, Kapil Madan. You, you want to quickly add something? Yeah, I just want to. Yes, up? yes. I just, I just, I just want to, you know, add a, a, a example, practical example. Now, sometimes what happens is that you know the couples are staying abroad. They came here for marriage, and there is an irretrievable breakdown of marriage. So what happens is that if you don't waive off this whole period, then the person has to leave ah. his, you know, employment, come here. so you have many instances like right. this where where it makes no sense for the court to insist that we should you know wait for a period of 6 months and you should come back again yep. after 6 months and present the same petition and present the same set of facts so i mean there there could be numerous such situation when where the parties are facing that kind of peculiar circumstances and mm. it is you know only just and proper in those cases to waive off this uh, uh, you know mandatory All right. So again, so it's reflective of the times we live in. It's just making things more practical. It's aware of the fact, as you say, there could be people who've been married here, living abroad. You'd have to come back here in order to get your uh, divorce uh, through. Thanks. Thanks, uh, both of you, for clarifying all of that and simplifying this uh, this uh, order for our viewers. Thanks so much.